ready for story time? I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you and I were on the same season of Laugh After Dark. Right, right. right? We, we filmed our, our episodes and all was amazing with the world. Well, I had two jokes in uh, my episode, season two, episode four. Everyone, if you want to go back and watch, uh, I didn't have orange hair. Um, but I, I have two Trump jokes in uh, my set. Uh, and one of them has to do with the fact that I had been watching a lot of Hoarders. Do you ever watch the TV show yeah, Hoarders? Yeah, yeah, okay. Love it. Well, I made a little, uh, I had a little realization while I was watching 500,000 episodes of Hoarders, <laughs> uh, which was that I realized that all of the Hoarders on Hoarders were white women, uh, <laughs> which is why I think that 53% of white women voted for Trump because they don't know how to take out the trash, right? Oh. So, <laughs> okay. So that's the, the, that was the first joke, right? And then the second joke was, you know, 53% of white women voted for Trump because I think that they were hoping someone might grab them in the pussy. That was the second oh. one, right? So I am not a political comedian. Uh, those two jokes clearly just wrote themselves. Uh, and telling those jokes in LA during that time, they got a fantastic response. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes applause breaks. If I was lucky, everyone loved it. I mean, it was almost just like a total love in for these jokes. So we finished Laugh After Dark and I know I've got these great jokes and I'm just totally like, wonderful, right? And then uh, I got a call because I was going to be down at the Palm Springs Comedy Festival. And this guy was like, oh, well, I'm doing a show while you're down there. Uh, and I would love for you to come and do the show. And I was like, great, tell me about your show. And he was like, well, um, it's clothing optional. Hmm. That's what I said. I was like, <laughs> what does this mean, clothing optional? And he was like, well, I mean you can be naked or you can wear clothes, but the audience will be naked. Wow. So it was at a nudist colony in Palm <laughs> Springs. And I was like, hard pass. Like, I was <laughs> like, comedy wow. is hard enough. Right. Like, I don't need all that extra nakedness. Right. You know what I mean? So I was like, yeah, I'm not interested in this. And also I felt like, I don't know, why is this person asking me? Like I was, you know, a woman in comedy. Like there were so many things going through my head. I was just like, not interested. So he was like, if you know anybody else that would be interested in the gig. And I was like, absolutely. Let me just kind of, you know, tap my friends. So I got inside of a little Facebook message group with a bunch of other female comedians. And I was like, you know, this is a, you know, this show, clothing optional. And all the girls were like, well, I want to do it. And 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 then I was like, well, I want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> now it looks tempting. Right, because I was just, I don't want to be left out. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I, I, I want to be where the party is sure. all the time, right? right? So I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'll, I'll do the goddamn show, right? So uh, we're down there for the festival. And then we, you know, we drive over and, you know, we, we, buzz this buzzer and the door opens and we walk in and the person who is taking care of us is 100% naked except for socks and Tevas. Like just... What? Yeah. So... Is that a house? Uh, yeah. So it's a nudist colony, which is kind of like a, like, it's like bungalows surrounding like a swimming pool. Everyone there is naked. <laughs> Everyone. So, uh, so then we, we were about ready for the comedy show and, you know, the other comedians were, you know, it, it, the list was kind of like, I was pretty much, I think I was second to last or whatever. And four other comedians went before me. They were crushing. This audience, I was like, well, maybe this isn't so bad. What, <laughs> Melanie, what's wrong with your hangups? Everyone's got their thing, whatever. So they're laughing. They're having a great time. I'm also at the same time, there's a dude there who keeps on trying to like, He's kind of like, it was kind of like the Benny Hill show. Do you remember like, you know, like chasing me around the table a little bit. Like wherever wow. I would go, he would be there and I would move and he would be there and I would move and he would be there. And clearly he wanted something, of course, with his wife who was like, it was, there was, there was a lot going on. Right. So I was just totally like, I'm here for the show. I kept my, my outfit on the entire time. I looked amazing, by the way. <laughs> uh, and so anyway, everyone, all the comics were doing great. Just killing. Right. And I was like, this is going to be great. They're going to love my material. This is awesome. I get up there, I'm literally one minute into my thing, and I go, 53% of white women voted for Trump, and the woman in the front row goes, oh, no, you don't. What? She was like, oh, <laughs> you stepped in it now. Wow. Naked Trump voters is what I what? was per performing for. Uh, and I was like, the blood just drained out of my right. body, because I was like, uh, uh, like I didn't, 
I had to like pivot really fast. And I, I looked over at the other comedians and they were like, we can't help you. <laughs> like, right, I, you, know, right. you know, like I'm looking at- Is this the, allowed? Right, I, I was like, ah, ah, like someone please, wow. you know. So I was like, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry, you guys. I, I didn't recognize you without your regalia. Ah. <laughs> and um, so, and I never wanted to see like a red MAGA hat fat, like more, you yeah, know what I mean? Because yeah. I was like, I couldn't identify them without their clothes on, you the know? Uniforms. Oh <laughs> my God. And so, and clearly they were Bush supporters is what I'm just trying to say. Uh. Um, I know, I did a really terrible joke. Anyway, so I was completely dying on stage. So I pivoted and I was somehow able to turn it around. Uh, but it was probably one of the, the, the scariest and most like alarming uh, transactions. And they always say, you know what I mean? Picture your, uh, your audience naked right. and uh, they were clearly doing all the work for me and um, so what I learned was that um, you know if you're going to do uh, political humor uh, you definitely have to like not just do it in your inside your little bubble and so mm. I learned pretty quickly uh, with that transaction with the uh, naked Trump supporters so that wow. was uh, my story. And I almost wow. like didn't, um, <laughs> like from then on those jokes, I literally would get like a little bit of like PTSD. Like yeah. I was like, oh. Did like, you do more places after that? Was it easy though? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I slowly started to figure out like where and when to do the jokes. Gotcha. However, I was very confused because Palm Springs seems very kind of like, it does seem like a liberal, you yeah. know, LGBTQ. Like yeah. I was just totally like, wouldn't this, Mm. But I was like naked, and mm. then the tr like I didn't mm. know these two worlds could overlap. It was pretty mind blowing wow. uh, transaction. But uh, yeah, Damn. yeah, I don't, I don't want to perform for naked people ever again. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I've been heckled before, but they've all had clothes on, so I, don't, <laughs> yeah. I wish I could say I understand. But that's, that's yeah, that's, it was, <laughs> it was really advanced topics. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how I would have. Shaking back after that. I, I would have just started roasting them instantly if they had no clothes. I'm like, sit down. Why is one titty sagging more than another? Sit down. Let me finish this joke. I was, you don't have oh, any clothes on. I was so rattled. I was so rattled. I mean, wow. I, I don't know. I, I I can't always like work on the fly like that. Sure. But uh, it was, uh, it was because I just felt, I felt immediately like they were super mad at me. Wow. You know what I mean? Whole room just tensed up. Oh boy. my God. And I could see the buttons. <laughs> butt cheeks Yeah. Clean. Just, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Oh my goodness. Not good. That's crazy. Not good. Well, shout out to season two of Laugh After Dark. It's nice that you was able to exercise that material <laughs> some other places, man. I, yeah, that that would have been interesting. Now I want to do a naked show just so I can have my naked show experience. Now I'm going to be, I have to get his Instagram. Well, yeah, yeah I, I'm sure you could get booked on the show. I'm sure they would love you. Oh, I'm man. sure they'd be happy to have you. Oh yeah, you're have right. You. I mean, I'll make it home. Oh, <laughs> man. They'd be like, Charlie, don't do it, dog. They know white people finna do it, dog. It's a setup. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I have to Instagram live the whole show just to make sure. Hey, y'all, just y'all stay here with me. Just <laughs> I'm gonna tell these jokes. Y'all just I'm not I'm not exiting out of the live until I'm in the car. <laughs> I mean, come on. Wow. Wow, wow. Yeah, so you got your work cut out for you uh, moving forward because this is now a more, you know, uh, intense and political atmosphere. It seems like you can't even run away from politics now. So that's challenged the openness of comedians and how we exercise. So I think you should, you should continue to continue to do those jokes and it's going to make people uncomfortable. But I feel like one of the things comedians are able to do is to, in the coolest way, hit you with some real shit yeah. some real truth there's I agree. there's so much truth to every you know comics you know joke so well yeah. i agree and that's why i even used like a real statistic in right. it and that's why cuz it was very important to me to know that and also to kind of like slide some information in there uh, but i'm not usually like i i i feel sometimes not completely confident in doing political material yeah um, because it is very divisive. Yeah, yeah. And I'm really like, I think my own kind of trauma and damage is I want everyone to be having a good yeah, time. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I can feel so, that too, yeah. so I'm so in just knowing that they turned against me and that they were so immediately angry with right. me. And and it really brought the show to a grinding halt. Right. Which was like Did someone have to follow you after that joke? Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, and I think she got completely naked. Like I think I think she, no, had, she had no choice. <laughs> <laughs> she was like on the side, like shh. Shit. Yeah, like get this bra off the it. back of me. Yeah, I'm gonna I have mean, to show him the titties. I mean, it was uh, it was really, really, really challenging. Uh, but yeah, because I, I feel like political stuff. Like I feel like if you're if you're going to do it, 
you better have the information right. and know how to kind of like, I mean, I, you, I think you have to be pretty seasoned Definitely. to do it. You have yeah. to be able how to manage and control them, uh, bring them back, let them go. Like you have to understand how like they'll respond to it and have right. all of the options kind of worked out. Right. If it's going great, awesome. If it doesn't, how do you make, how do you help them feel good again and then bring them back on your team? Right. But I had, I had just been lulled into this false sense of confidence in LA with yeah. everyone just laughing their asses right. off for these jokes. Right. Uh, and then I get, you know. Paul's like, you ain't in LA now. Oh, no, I get wasn't. A, Jake, <laughs> <laughs> load up the truck. <laughs> We and it was the woman who was mad at me. It was her husband was the one that was oh. like chasing me around the table. Oh, no. So I was just totally, this is so multi-layered. Wow. Like Super I just, awkward. I could not, I could not get my feet under me. And, and all, all the girls that I was with, oh, of course, God. were like drinking and they're in the hot tub. And I'm like, let's go. You right. know what I mean? Let's right. get your shit. You right. know? Y'all not hungry? What's going on? <laughs> I don't want none of this shit. I, didn't I know. I'm like. Dip oh. they balls all in the damn hummus. I don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> It's just totally wow. like, let's go. <laughs> that sounds super awkward. It was real. But, you know, here's the thing. No. Uh, now I feel like I almost put myself into situations like this because I need the stories. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I don't feel like anybody's going to be able to top that now and be like, oh, so you didn't have a naked heckler? Yeah, uh, I know. I'm totally like, right. I need to be in a situation because my life is like, my life is actually pretty good. Right. I mean, we were talking about it before we were rolling. I'm happily married. You know, life right. is kind of good. Like, I don't right. have that kind of like, everything's terrible and I've got something to talk about. So I almost right. have to kind of put myself into situations that are challenging. But that was certainly, I came out with the story at the end of it. So that, that's what I got to do. You know, I'm married too. So I feel the same way. Like things are going too smooth. Man. Where, <laughs> where's my wild sporadic, you know what I'm saying? You know, type I know, stuff I'm like, happening. I'm like, don't be like me kids. Don't, nah. don't, don't be happily married and figure right. it all out. And yeah. Find that adventure. Yeah, exactly. Go find it. Yeah. yeah. I know Damn. you got to have some sort of tension. Boy, so. I try to, you know, now, you know, I'm just in Trader Joe's. I'm grocery shopping and finding the parking spot. It's just too basic. I need some excitement. So you're right. Maybe I could. I should look into this nudist. But what's crazy about my situation, my wife would want to come. Like, there's no <laughs> oh, way. Well, that is a horse of a different color. <laughs> yeah. Like, how am I going to do this nudist? She's all, show? like, taking her clothes off. No, like, my wife would be the one with clothes on. And she'd be watching me, like, go ahead and look at her if you want to. No, look at her. <laughs> Baby, everybody, nobody, everybody has some, you know, I don't you can do the show, but you better not look at one of them white women's asses. <laughs> like, you just, hear me? Just, oh, baby, shit. Up, Blindfold me. <laughs> <laughs> what was the movie uh, Sandra Bullock did where they had the blindfold on? They couldn't oh, see them. Oh, my God. What was yeah. that movie? Oh, Birds. Something in something. a box? Bird, Bo box? Bird Box. Bird Box. <laughs> I always have to be out there like Bird Box. All right. I got the rope. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what the mic stand yeah. is. Bird Box Comedy Hour. Oh, ah, uh, that's thing. a thing. Thank you. You heard it here first, people. <laughs> We're launching Spring of 2021. That could be a thing. Show up with no clothes, <laughs> but a blindfold, <laughs> so nobody's awkward. <laughs> oh man, it was uh, it was a lot. Oh my gosh, it was a lot. And it's a ride back to LA, so you had a lot of time to just process. Well, we <laughs> after that night, we um, we no, because we were performing at the at the festival. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. and I think I think Laugh After Dark. Yeah, uh, Ronaldo. Was, but, I think he was yes, on there too. Yeah, he won. Yeah, he won. Shout yes, out to Ronaldo yes, yes. Evans. Yeah, a lot of us were there. Yeah, uh, cool. It was so we were in a, in good company there. Uh, and I think we had our performances the next day. Mm. Uh, and I think I just was like, fuck it. I am so rattled from this <laughs> transaction. I'm like, I don't know. Joke, joke, joke. Am I done here? Right. Like, like, get me out of here. Right. It was really a lot. Yeah, that's got to be awkward. After a show like that, now to go and do a... a a show where you have to be at your game well, to not feel as confident about what you're going to go and do. Yeah, and it was, and the festival was, uh, it was a, it was, it was very interesting uh, the way that it was all set. Anyway, I was super rattled by the whole transaction. Where was the festival? Was that a hotel, right? Or yeah, it was at okay. the Hard Rock or something. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah, it was a good festival, but it was a long day and. And of course, it's like, you know, it's a competition and there was like a winner and there was right. all these like, you know, stakes and, right. but my head had just left the building. Right. Like I was just like, naked people everywhere. Right. Guys, right. Ah. right. <laughs> the next weeks after you're waking up at three in the morning. Yeah. Like, ah. <gasps> yeah. Um, but it was good, you know. Wow. How did you explain this to your wife? Like while you were down there? Did you talk to her while you were there as you booked the show? Like what was that first conversation? Like, hey, honey, I'm yeah. going to be doing a show. but uh. I mean, it was uh, it was the topic of conversation a lot after that. Every dinner party, right. I was like, you're not going to believe it, you guys. Uh, naked Trump supporters, if you didn't know they were a thing. <laughs> right. I don't know. Somehow I hit a vein. Right. I, there they are. Um, right. Yeah. I mean, it, it really became a story. And so now... 
when I do those jokes, sometimes <laughs> I tack on the story afterwards oh, yeah. to kind of follow it up. That's, that's, good. Um, that's good. Because people are always like, are you kidding me? But then, you know, I have to decide whether or not to do that material because right. if the audience isn't going to be happy with me, right. then yeah, it's, definitely. it's a hard pass. It's a good thing you're still in California, at least. You know, I told you I moved from, moved from Texas, I'm from Louisiana right. originally. So you go to some of those states and some of that material, it's not, they're not as, you know, uh, as, as cool about it. Sometimes they can get in frenzy or in hand and yeah. it's, it's, it's tense. Which is why I usually just choose not to. Right. Which is why I usually just leave the political uh, comedy for uh, other people to do. I most, my life It's so has, hard to do that though when there's so much material. Yeah, and well, and that's why on. I felt like those just kind of came to me. Right. And and at the time it was so kind of like, there was such a political frenzy going. I mean, it, currently it's always happening. But uh, at that time it really just seemed on point. It was. Yeah. I'm telling you, that shit is still on point. It so. is. It is. I mean, it's just writing itself right, right, right now. So now back to the hoarders because I'm just trying to think now. I've been over here thinking- I don't know any hoarders. I don't think I know any hoarders as of now. And it was crazy. Like, I grew up in an all-white neighborhood and all that. My best friend's name was Dylan. Shout out to Dylan. <laughs> Joshua. Those are my neighbors. All right, you know, We were Josh. the first blacks to really segregate our area in Louisiana where we were from. But, uh, yeah, the white women with hoarders. Now that I think about it. But you know what's crazy? It may not come to me until later on tonight. I'm like, oh, she did have hella grape jelly in the past. She was all over the place. Oh, my God. I never noticed. I mean, <laughs> if you watch... I mean, it really, I mean... It is, though, right? It right. is a little crazy. <laughs> and then I also had another connection. Uh, do you ever watch My 600-Pound Life? I've seen. My wife watches it. And I'll come in that room like, really? What are we watching? Right, really? Yeah, right. I mean, it's... Okay. So, but the interesting thing about My 600-Pound Life is all of those people are married. That's true. Which I'm like... So when I watch something like Bachelor in Paradise, right. where everyone is like, you know... No wrinkles, right, no body right, fat, right. no moral compass. Can't and yet, find shit. Exactly. And I'm like, well, I'm just here to find love. And I'm like, right. really, Hannah? You can't find love? Right. You are stunning. You're a swimsuit model. Like, right. what? And I'm like, you got to take a page out of my 600-pound life. Right. You know what it is, though? Stop working out. Expectations. I think that I think the more attractive or the more attractive you think you are or are technically depending right. on who, whatever is maybe you're anticipating that your prince charming is paid, he's rich, he yes. looks like this, he's like this, right. as opposed to where maybe you understand I'm six hundred pounds. <laughs> <laughs> this is a person that likes me. I think I'm a fuck with them. Well, you know what's what interesting, <laughs> what happens on the show too is when the people start to lose weight, the partners sometimes leave them. Damn. Because they started getting better and improving? I think it's because they want to Somebody be needed. Mm -hmm. So these people that are 600 pounds have found that special someone to bring them sandwiches, mm -hmm. right? right? Because they can't move. <laughs> no, right. Then they start to thin out, and then their partners don't feel needed anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is like... It's a mental thing. Banana town. Sure. I mean... Yep. And then they're like, well, I need to find somebody else. So anyway, I, I love me some trash TV. Yeah, I really. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of that. There's a lot of that on, on now. I mean, you just reality TV. and I love it. There's so many shows. Me and my wife are watching one of the Millionaire Matchmaker. Oh, like that. oh my God. Say no more. We I love the Millionaire movie. Matchmaker. We were, we were going at it. Yeah, I know. The sugar babies, and you got these dudes. Hey, yeah, maybe whatever you need. Get your purse. I got you, baby. Oh, my God. I love million, mil, mil, Millionaire Matchmaker. I, mean, I can't even crazy. say it because I'm stuttering over the amazing. Yeah, of it's it crazy. All. We're in a, uh, what, there's another one, 90 Day Fiance. There's a Married at First Sight. We saw that. So, yeah, we're. I'm we're really into Bachelor thing. Nation, unfortunately. I, haven't gotten into I really, really love to watch people uh, fall in love, fall out of love, and all of these. And I just yell at the TV. I'm uh. like, he's a love avoidant girl. He's a love avoidant. You know <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do the same thing. I'm like, he's not here for either of you guys. He's just having fun. And I'm sitting back. I'm a 90s baby. I was raised, you know, born in the 80s, raised in the 90s. So now I'm watching like, they all fighting over the same dude. He just smashed her. Now he's over here kissing you. I was like, man, the game has oh, changed. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, it changed. is. It can be very intense sometimes. But I think, and it's funny because my wife noticed that she was like, you have two settings. You're either watching like Academy Award winning content or garbage. Like there's right. no... In between, middle. you're right. Yeah, like, I would never watch 
bones. You know what I, I mean? Like, yeah. I, I'm, I would never watch Law and Order, even right. though I've been on the show, but yeah. I'm not gonna watch. Like, I'm, I mean, I'll be, I'm like, essentially, like, I'll be on, like, I'll like the show for pay. Right, like, right, like, right, right, right. This was fun. Nice <laughs> yeah. to meet you. I'm a big fan. Big fan. <laughs> like, oh my God. But, right. like, uh, yeah, I love, and she was like, what? It's so interesting that you just go, and I, it's funny because I think with the trash, it doesn't activate me as somebody who's in the industry. Like, yeah. I know I won't, I didn't lose that job to anybody. Right. Like, I'm not trying to write that show right. better. I'm not trying to, like, get cast on that show. Like, right. I'm just totally like, here is some thoughtless entertainment. Right. That I can just whisk away exactly. into their problems. Yeah, that's and true. not, you know, practice monologues in yeah. there or whatever. That's that's the, that's TV now. It's trying to wild off. I mean, it's crazy. There's, you know, I think Love and Hip Hop and the Housewives. of the, They have oh, Housewives show in every wives. city. Housewives. Oh, my gosh. I love my the wife, Housewives. My wife, same thing. New York, yep. Beverly Hills. Yep. There's another one. Pot, 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 tomato, pot. Potamus, something. There's one Potamic. Beverly Hills. Potamic. Yeah, I mean, and I'm like, how you keep up with all of this stuff? Why are, like, are they so de desperate? Like, yeah, no, it's Potomac. Weird. Potomac. Potomac. I think. I'm like, where is Potomac? I don't know. Maybe the new one is Salt Lake City, which I, I think it looks that. it looks very good. Uh, but uh, yeah, essentially. Same and what's story. interesting about the the Housewives of New York City? Uh, none of them are married. Wow. None of them are actual it's like basketball wives. <laughs> they ain't seen the basketball. They ain't been in the game. They go and all that. But it's the same thing. It's just about who they choose that they think is going to get the views and yeah. the sale, make the most sense. And it's just like, come on, man. Absolutely. But the thing about Millionaire Matchmaker to me, what me and my wife were getting into it about, we kind of was like, what? Because it's like these girls are obviously with them because of the lifestyle that they get. Mm. And she's just like, well, I don't see anything wrong with that. You know, if they have a mutual understanding, then cool. I'm just like, yeah, that's cool too, but uh, that's a little, uh, you know, did you feel like that's a little shallow, should we say? But we're in a time now where, just like even as comedians, or as we could continue to grow in the industry, you have to be hesitant as if someone with you for you. Because I oh think some God, people seek love, you know? Of course. I mean, but... I, I'm not capable. I mean, I, I think I tried once to be yeah. like, be with somebody, and I was just totally, I hate this. Like, I, like, <laughs> Bad idea. Yeah, well, I think it's like, a, I think Cher has a famous quote where her mom was like, why don't you just get with a rich man? And mm. she was like, and her response was so brilliant. She was like, mom, I am a rich man. Woo! Like, I don't need a man. I am <laughs> the rich man. Right. Like, I'm it. You know what I mean? But... It's, I, I'm not, like, I'm, uh, like, I'm, I'm the dude, essentially, like, in my marriage yeah. with my wife, which is that, like, I, I'm, like, so running you come home, you want a plate to be made, so ain't nothing been cooking here <laughs> well, all day? I mean, it's, That's what's going my on. wife is a chef. <laughs> so. Oh, nice. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't know how it all worked out. Wow. Somehow, no, I'm the one that's, like, running around in the middle of the night trying to make strangers laugh and then tiptoeing in in, right. the, in the middle of the night, like, you right. know, heating up leftovers really <laughs> quietly. Like, I'm the dude in the relationship. Mm. You know what I mean? So, and I think that when, I, when I've been in relationships with men, that's why it's never, like, I'm always mm. like, no, no, that we're like essentially like both going to the pitcher's mound. Like, well, what are you doing here? Like, right. it doesn't like it just the two things didn't always work because gotcha. I just assumed kind of the more dominant uh, side of the relationship. Nice. So your wife cooks. I'm going to talk about that. I love it because I love oh. to eat. And I mean, that's dope. Well, so. I live in a restaurant. I mean, essentially, like I, I just text her what I want. She just brings it. Wow. Like even this morning. So I think I saw on TikTok, someone posted about this amazing uh, um, fried chicken place in Koreatown mm. or whatever. So I sent her the link as I was like, we should go. Because we're total foodies. I love like Korean chicken wings. I was looking for something the other day. Like. Well, I think it was like, I don't know, mashed mm. potatoes, collard greens. And I like, Damn. I'm very susceptible to, um, oh God, what's the word I'm looking for? Suggestion. Yeah. So if I see... If they're like eating something on TV, I'm like, oh, I want that. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I'll just send her the link. I sent her the link, and then literally before Damn. I left to get here, she was like, "Do you still want barbecue?" Damn, <laughs> I'm on the way. Y'all finna have some company, company. God damn, I'm on the way. But I have to say though, um, in being together, I've probably gained like 50 pounds. That's okay. <laughs> you got a magic genie chef at the house that pleases you. 
I don't want to hear no more complaints about anything. But I know, I know, I know, I know. If I y'all know. have relationship problems, don't come to me because I'm gonna be like, you need to get your ass <laughs> back in there <laughs> to, to cook some. I think, but I also know too. Like, I'm also trying to work. You right, know what I mean? Right, and so right. I feel like also too, when it comes to weight with women, like I was getting to the point where I was like, you either need to gain 200 more pounds or yeah. you need to lose this 50. Like, yeah. you know, because it's like in the middle where I was at. Like, it doesn't. Yeah. I'm I'm not anyway. I was just no man's land. Right. Like, I'm not too fat. Like a Melissa right. McCartney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I wasn't skinny enough. Like, I was just kind of like, and I was like, I got to get my my shit together. I was you know? literally there, like, maybe two years ago, three years ago. And I've recently lost probably 15, 20 pounds or something like that. But I felt like I was in that position for, like, seven years. Yeah. And it was weird. It was kind of like I was, I was like, husky. Yeah. You know, I had that stomach. My, I did push-ups, but yeah. I still had that meat all yeah, over. Yeah. I was like, shit. Yeah. Shirts don't fit right. You got to fluff them off yeah. sometimes. It was like, what is this? It's the in-between <laughs> phase. Yeah. And I, I mean, and I'm Italian, so I, oh, I do cool. wear weight well. Facts. Like it's not like it. It wasn't like a terrible thing, but you know, I, I've been. A, I was. I started my career as a dancer, and so I. I oh, did I we? don't normally like. Anyway, DJ, hit this. No, I'm just playing. Mm-hmm. Hey, baby. So I, you know, being like almost 200 pounds, I was like, girl, what is going on? <laughs> you know. So I've lost 25 pounds wow, during the go, pan- girl. during quarantine. I'm gonna come out of this like a fucking swan. Right, right. Like I'm just totally like everyone else. You worry about your weight, right. and I'm gonna come out of this looking a thousand times better. <laughs> you just better hope your wife isn't like the women that's on. You know, my 600 pounds. I, I want you to stay big. But no, I got chicken in here frying. <laughs> Come on over here and sit down. I mean, she's your I mean, ranch sauce, right? There. I mean, <laughs> essentially, she was like, Do you still want barbecue? I mean, she is like nice, that, but you know, nice. she's uh, and you know, she's she's still young. Right. Uh, and and uh, she's trying to please you, keep you happy. Yeah, right. and I was I was skinny in my 30s too. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's it's a blessing, but it's also like I've had to learn how to be like, no, no, that's Everyone else, like, she eats half a plate, my kid eats half, and I'm eating everyone's leftovers. Like, right. I just had to stop going for seconds, right. like, just in thirds. And, and, then, yeah, and right. then going out to do comedy. Do like, then, any desserts, too? And then, oh, all, all of that, all of that. Damn. I know. I know. It really is. Awesome. No, no one's happy for me. That's why I always say. Like, I live in L.A. No one's happy for me. Wow. But, like, I, you know, I've somehow figured out life at this stage. Yeah, L.A. is a tough place to enjoy and indulge, too, because I have a sweet tooth. I, I'm a foodie. I love eating oh, yeah. and trying. Like, suggest it and bring it all yep. here. But L.A. is a place where it's you, you really have to find that balance. Like, I've cut back on a lot of just, like, meats that I was eating. You know, pork, red meat, even burgers I rarely would do now unless it's just, you know, one of those late shows. Right. You know, there's a Wendy's. Oh, shit. I'm about oh, no, to pull no. it. You know, I, just I would go to open mics based on where the pizza was. Ooh. Like, because Ghost Pizza was over there by Burt's, and mm. I would literally, like... I would be like, what am I craving today? What part of town do I want to be in so right. I could eat after the mic? Right. And then, you know, and then you're just... In the and, area. Well, and then, <laughs> you, because you're up late past 10, 11, 12 at night sometimes, right. you need an extra meal because Definitely. you're starving. Right. And then you're having an extra 4,000 calories. So Same this has turned into the weight loss uh, <laughs> talk <program>. show. <laughs> <laughs> right. And my big ass would be at run you with my friends, LA friends. Hey, come on now. I'm just <laughs> only one sweating. Damn, oh, yeah. Try- no, no. Oh, I can't. Man. I cannot with the run you. Yeah, it's a I lot. will not, won't do it. Yeah. It's a lot. Can't do it. Yeah, my wife, she just started recently going with a few of her friends, and they're going, they're waking up at six in the morning, and I wake Good up, she's gone. Her. I'm just like, wow. Good for her. Wow. So I'm just going to go ahead and get a bagel. Yes. Oh. <laughs> I mean, essentially, like, I think we're, the reason why we're moving back to New York City is so I can have bagels. Like, nice. I'm just. Oh, that's where, that was the first time I ever tried a bagel. Wasn't until I even moved to New York, New Jersey area. Well, then you did the right my thing. My whole life, I didn't even have bagels. We didn't do a lot of bagels. Maybe it was in the south. In the south, we had we did donuts. Well, do you and know why they're why they're better in New York? Please tell me. Because of the water. Ah. And so same thing with pizza. It, there's ah. a chemical whatever in the water, and so and the reason why I was going to Ghost Pizza, that guy had a had a filtration system that replicated New York City what? water. So like somebody in New York, you know got whatever, a sample of it, and figured out all of the levels, the minerals, the whatever, wow. the whatever, all the stuff that's in it, then created this filtration system. So then th- he would take that water and mix it with the dough and the, and the bagels or whatever, and then that's what makes it taste so good. Well, now i got to try ghost pizza. It is really good. I'm trying to keep up with my Hollywood friends. Sorry. You know, take my shirt off at the beach, <laughs> stop feeling uncomfortable. Hey, Phil, y'all, y'all trying to get in. Right, go. yeah, yeah. I'm good. I'm so just, you just have one piece. And for right. me, I would like, well, I got to have two or three. Yeah. You know what I mean? So Well, my yeah. daughter's seven, so she loves pizza. Oh. So, hey, babe, what do you want for dinner? I know what she's going to say. Of course. But it's because I want some. No, no. What do you want? Say it. 
you're like pizza all right I, pizza. I just ordered some yeah <laughs> exactly. i know my son too same thing pizza yeah. yeah kids having kids it's hard to eat healthy yeah uh let's yeah. get in there that's what's up awesome. i know awesome, awesome. yeah right. so moving forward 2020 got a lot of wild shit going on now comedy is looking very different a lot of people are doing outdoor shows and patio shows have you had a chance to do any virtual shows or patio kind of stuff since so been- yeah so uh well right before the pandemic uh, happened. Uh, my comedy producer partner and I were doing a show called Make It Rain Comedy. Oh, nice. And it was at Cheetah's Strip Club. <coughs> <laughs> Go ahead and book me. <laughs> we'll I'll totally, be there early. We'll totally book you. But um, so it was at Cheetah's. And so, uh, you know, people would do their comedy and then they would do a strip. I mean, I wouldn't ask anybody to take their clothes off, but, and you didn't have to take off anything. Are you secretly inviting me to the show in Palm Springs? <laughs> Did that dude call his house cheetahs? What's going on with you? This what is, is all it? just one big kickstand to be like, how can I get everyone naked? Right, um, right, right, yeah, right. no, exactly. Um, and so uh, we had amazing people on the show. Margaret Cho did the nice. show. And so I was just totally like, how can we make money doing comedy? Right. And so people would just throw money on the stage. We would sweep up all the money at the end. We would count it and then split it amongst all the comedians. Damn. And we made great money doing wow. that. Wow. Then the pandemic happened. Now I look back on those pictures where we are just like <laughs> all over each other, throwing <laughs> dirty money in the air, just sliding right. down poles and just right. on the floor. And I'm like, I wouldn't touch a stripper pole right. with a ten foot pole right. at this point. Like I'm just like. <laughs> anyway, then we moved it virtually. Uh, so we had you know comics from all over America that would come and essentially dance, and it was super fun. Nice. Um, and then. We took a break, you know, when the the social justice stuff started happening and we just didn't want to be a part of, not be a part of the correct conversation. And so we just shut it down and, um, you know, of course, individually focused our energies on that stuff. Um, And then I just noticed that I got really uh, depressed, just straight up not doing comedy um, and just not having community. For me, comedy isn't just making people laugh, but connecting with people and I can be a little bit of a lone wolf yeah, in yeah, my yeah. own life. Same. Um, and so uh, we launched uh, a weekly show called the Antidepressant Comedy Hour. Oh, and it's thanks. mostly my meds, essentially. <laughs> so every Sunday night on Comedy Hub, uh, we have a show. You're more than welcome oh, to yeah. come and do the show. For sure. Uh, and so um, it's super fun. And Comedy Hub is on Twitch. Okay. And they already have a built-in audience. So even as soon as the show starts, sometimes we have 100, 200 people really? already watching. Via Twitch. Yeah. I've been hearing about that. A lot of, I've been in gaming. There's a lot of people yeah. that are doing gaming and stuff on there. But I mean, so it's like, so I think it's like one of the first comedy clubs that's on Twitch. And so, um, and the guy who runs it is super fun. And so that I also have my own uh, talk show on there called the Promotional Rescue Talk yes, Show. Yes, I, I tuned into that. Um, I know, right? Too. We talked about yeah, you on the first episode because, of nice. course, I interviewed. Um, I love the. I don't know who does like the graphics and the setup. Jared, like, yeah. yeah, the guy from Laugh, uh, from uh, um, Comedy Hub helped me with it because yeah. I don't have all of that technical stuff. I'm yeah, super about the promotion. Right. I can book people right. and, and I can be the same. face of it and all that stuff, but I need help with all of that oh, stuff. Oh, I'm the same way. So my comedy producer, Gina, turned out that she had the capabilities to do all of this. Um, Shout out to Gina. I know. Well, <laughs> it was one of those things where it was like, I didn't know she had this gift with her about the like, she knows how to do Zoom and streaming and all of this stuff. Uh-huh. I was like, it just worked out that she had this talent. Um, and so, uh, and now I'm just totally like thanking my lucky stars that she does because I don't have that. You know right. what I mean? So, yeah, so we have a weekly show. Uh, and like I said, I launched the promotional rescue talk show where I talk to people about their promotion. Um, and because now people still need to be promoting themselves. Right. Even more so now because everyone's got to move things online because right. they can't just deny the fact that they need an online presence, that they have to have something online, examples of your work, websites, social media, all that stuff. I think people could kind of get away with it before this chapter of our life. And now it's like, if you're not doing it, the hell are you doing? Yeah, you're out of the picture, just about. Yeah. So, and that's what I help people do. So I'm having these conversations with people and it's not like people have to be a genius about promotion. I just want to talk to them about how they get through it because I feel like self-promotion has so much stuff around it I even just know for myself, and I do this for a living with people, teaching people how to do this. When it's time for me to promote my stuff, like, I, I don't know what happens. Like, yeah. my body just goes like, 
like I just down. power down and I'm yeah. like, what do I do first? <laughs> yeah. Like, how do I focus on right. this? Which is why you need someone to partner you through it. Nice. And also to hold your hand when you are like, I'm nervous. I don't know. I, you know. Because for a lot of people, I'm sure that's scary too, putting themselves out there and talking about so themselves if they haven't done scared. them before. Yeah. And the visibility. People right. are scared of being visible. Also too with comedy. I just helped a friend um, talking with her about releasing her comedy special and she talks about certain people in her special and she's worried that they're going to see, mm, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you're just all of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And even when the laugh after dark thing happened with the Trump jokes yeah. and then I saw how people just right outside of LA responded. Right. And then I was like, shit, is the world going to hate me now? Am I going to be loved? Well, and or I was like, what? God, what did I just do? <laughs> did I just, right. and I'm like, but Melanie, you wouldn't want to be in that place anyway. Right. You wouldn't necessarily want to be booked at a place that wouldn't want to accept you right. exactly the way that you right. are. Exactly. You don't want to be, so it's okay. Right. right? So, I mean, we were talking about this earlier, like just yeah. being you is the best thing. But right. I guess in our minds, we always want to appeal to everyone, of course, you of know, course. but it's not possible. And you truly don't want that. That's at, true. At and the then you're not, the because day. then you're not really tr being true to who you just are in your raw form. And that's something I kind of, I won't say struggle with, but sometimes I have a little bit of anxiety because of my content and I want uh, to be accepted. I want things to flow as well. But at the same time, as long as I feel like I'm being organic yeah. and I'm being genuine yeah. and I feel good about what I'm doing, whether it's out with my family or I'm out here or there, right. whatever the case, then it's like I sleep much better at night just knowing that I'm sharing my experiences. I'm yeah. promoting other people. I'm promoting myself, what I'm doing. I am excited about the future. Oh, yeah, I am planning or talking about this or planting those seeds or just staying relevant. So as long as you're genuine about it, then that, that always kind of helps me staying true to who you are. I don't know what it is though about our brains, but then even though that's truly what we want, right. it gravitates towards either those people that don't like us, right. that don't accept us, or I don't know what it is. Yeah. I think it's because like when we're like as cavemen, like you had to spot danger in yeah. order to kind of stay alive. And I think that's still something that's totally inside of us. Like what's wrong here? Yeah. How can I, how can I save myself? Like right. how can I fix this situation? And I feel like there's so little that we need to do these days. I mean, we have food everywhere and, you know, it's different. But I feel like our minds are still hardwired to figure out what is the problem. Yeah. And we sometimes gravitate towards or trying to win. Like I'm trying to win at comedy sometimes. Right. Like clubs right. that just, I know will never book me in a million right. years, but I want to win. You right. know what I mean? Like, or I right. want that group of- They want to deny me yes, and not so, accept me. I'm oh, right there, but they won't- I'm give, like, what is wrong? Right. You know what I, or like the, that little click of a group that right. you're just like, they don't book you on their shows yep. and you're like, I want to win. You right. know, I don't know what that is. Right. But you know what I think it is or which bucket I put it in is this ammunition. You put that into your, I immediately transition that into, I'm going to motivate myself. Yeah. I'm going to make them wish that they would have booked out to me. So, so, so I'll be able to turn around and say, why are you trying to book me for this show now? I've been coming here for three years. I didn't get any funny. What, is, what, what happened? Let me get another drink. What's up? What happened? I, so they'll have true. to then say, oh, well, well, now that I see that you've done, now right. we, it's like, oh, okay. Well, everyone always but it's, changes it's their tune. But a political tune. stuff, too. Everyone always changes their tune. I mean, yeah. anytime I've ever had any success, all of a sudden, everybody, which is right. to be expected. Sure. It's just the way it goes. Yeah. And then you're attractive and yeah. what have you. But, you know, there is that that in, ambition that want, in me that wants to tackle situations that are either impossible or yeah. like, are maybe just gonna give me more stress. Facts. And I don't, I'm too old, I'm too tired, yeah. I can't, you yeah. know what I mean? Uh, it's not worth it. It doesn't make me a better comedian. Right. At the end of the day, I wanna make sure that I'm, you know, providing the best content. Right. And so I gotta go where it's warm. I gotta go where people love me and appreciate me and are happy for what I'm doing exactly the way that I am accepting me with no changes today. Exactly. Yeah, I was just telling Johnny before the show started, uh, three words I try and live by, embrace your process. Mm. And that's when it's going bad, when it's going good. Uh, this didn't work out. Everything is working out to take you to where you belong. You know, and as long as you're just embracing each step of the process, understanding you're learning something from it, you're growing from that, then we have a better way to go, man. So Advanced yeah. topics. Definitely. When it's not going well, it is very difficult. Yeah. Uh, to to think that something better is coming, exactly, and uh, and to not give up because if you quit, they said don't quit five minutes before the miracle. You know what I mean? So exactly, which is hard because when you're in that dark night of the soul, and we've all had them, um, 
even with my comedy special that's out, I actually had completely taped my comedy special and I lost that special to the producers. Wow. Lost it, gone, like couldn't get it back. So I had to stop crying, which I did for <laughs> sure. three days straight. And just be like, well, do it. You have the material. You have the stupid dress. Right. Hire the makeup artist again. Yep. Rent the space. Yep. Do it. And then through that process, it, then it got up again and then is on Amazon now. And Nice. So, but it was very hard to tell me during that time that when it was all going to shit to like. Uh, that's, <laughs> that that's It was what, like, <laughs> this is the good part. I was like, what? You that's know what, what I mean? life does. I feel like life put you in these positions to really bring the best out of you, to extract that person that you needed to be to get to where you're supposed to go. So you know what, girl? I'm so glad that you came to spend some time with me and shared your story. And shout out to all the necklet hecklers out there. <laughs> We're coming from you. We're coming for you. We're not going to stop doing what we do. So uh, any last things you want to plug or where can people follow you? Where can people get in touch you, um, with, with you? For stand-up comedy and, and all my stuff, MelanieVessie.com. And of course, for my business, PromotionalRescue.com. And I'm on Laugh After Dark, season two, episode four. So Bam! <laughs> you heard it right here, baby. Thank y'all so much for tuning in uh, to another dope, dope, dope. Oh, snap. The first episode of Do Tell with Laugh After Dark. I've been your host, Charlie Wilson. I'll see you next time. Look, look at y'all out here tuning in, okay? okay. No, hey, thank you for tuning in. You make sure you continue to tune in. Tell your friends, your baby mama, your baby, I, 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 tell him too. Make sure y'all like, follow, subscribe, support, all things do tell. I've been your host, Charlie Wilson. I'm here with Laugh After Dark, baby. You know how we do it.